In his goodness, God will give world leaders dreams to help them make the right decisions. When I heard that Donald Trump had given George Stephanopoulos access to him and to the White House for 30 hours, I realized that he had either not heard of my dream about George Stephanopoulos or had not listened to it. And the Bible says this in Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. When Jesus stood before Pilate, and Pilate didn't know he, this is the Son of God. He didn't know the ramification of his decision. God tried to interrupt him. In verse 19, when he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent a message saying, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. For last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. So who did he listen to? But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to put Jesus to death. But the governor said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? So he put it to a vote, basically, and democracy won. They put Jesus to death. What a mistake that was. I've taught about this in many, many teachings about the life of Joseph in the Dream Coat series. And I talk specifically about the Donald Trump prophecy in this series, the Dream Coat. And our key scripture, I quoted, was that both Peter and Joel said, and it shall come to pass in the last days. That's why we're in the last days. This is the end time sign. Says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. One of the signs of the end times is that there will be an increase in spiritual activity. There will be an increase in divine dreams and visions. And we're to pay attention to these. What these dreams actually do is they carry a word of wisdom. If you don't understand the nine gifts of the Spirit, you need to go and listen to those. Get a good teaching on the nine gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. And you will understand that God gives words of wisdom, which is revelation into the mind and the plans and purposes of God. So let me take you to the original video. Now this was posted, you can see clearly, this was posted in October 16, 2016. When I first had this dream, I was very hesitant to post it online. In fact, I had the dream in May 2014, and I did not even teach it to my own church until you can see October 2016. So I waited about two years. And people who have a prophetic gift, they need to realize you don't just rush out and just blabber everything that God gives you. A lot of people don't believe it anyway. They're just going to make fun of you. And if it's true, what's well, going to remain true even if you sit on it. So I put this out in 2016. Uh, it is now uh, middle of 2019. So it's been more than five years since I had the dream in May 2014. And I'll just give you a little snippet. Have a listen. A dream that God gave me back in May 2014. I haven't shared this dream to anyone for two and a half years, but I believe now is the right time to share it. I had a dream in which I heard very clearly George Stephanopoulos and Auntie Allie are staying near grandmother's house. All right, I'll just pause it right there. At this point in time, George Stephanopoulos was an anchor in ABC News, was on the Good Morning America. And we don't have that here in Australia. At least if we do, I don't watch it. So I had no idea who George Stephanopoulos is. And certainly Auntie Ali meant nothing to me whatsoever. I had to look him up. And this is what he looks like now. He was apologizing for not disclosing Clinton Foundation donations. The ABC News chief anchor apologized on air Friday morning on Good Morning America for having made donations to the Clinton foundation and not disclosing to his employer or viewers while covering the Hillary Clinton campaign. So obviously there's a picture of him being very dishonest and he's an operative and he's much more than an insider. He really is part of the globalist cabal. So he apologizes and says over the last several years, I've made substantial donations to dozens of charities, including the Clinton foundation. And they're not, you know, ordinary people like you and me. They have a lot of power and a lot of money, and they're trying to influence things behind the scenes. And if they can get away with it, they don't let people know. He's by no means a neutral person, and I don't understand why Donald Trump hasn't been advised of this, or at, at the very least, if he doesn't get the right advice, he should be listening to God, because we are trying to tell him 
uh, at least through social media, if he listens. Uh, it says here, before his career as a journalist, Stephanopoulos was advisor to the Democratic Party. He rose to early prominence as a communications director for the 1992 presidential campaign of Bill Clinton and subsequently became White House communications director. So he was a senior advisor on policy and strategy. Another little interesting thing, since you know Pastor Steve, I like numbers, uh, you can see that right now he's age 58. And he's going to be linked to another 58. And obviously, he's linked to the 58th president in the sense that this is the 58th presidential term, even though he's the 45th president. So 58 is everywhere. And 58 in Hebrew spells Noah. So as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So you see these patterns of 58 everywhere. So who is Ali? Well, what's really interesting is he is married to Alexandra Elliot Wentworth. And she is from a prominent family. Again, these are not ordinary people like you and me. Her mother was Nancy Reagan's White House social secretary. Her father was a reporter for the Washington Post, which is the most anti-Trump newspaper, completely biased. Her stepfather was editor of the Sunday Times in London. And you have to go down all the way to the bottom to realize it doesn't say that her nickname is Ali, but when you look at her bibliography, you find all these books written about her. And it says, Ali in Wonderland, happily Ali after, go ask Ali. And so God said to me, George Stephanopoulos and Auntie Ali are next to Grandma. And who's Grandma? Well, it was during the 2016 presidential debate that Donald Trump called Hillary Clinton Grandma Clinton. And she uh, likes the name. Uh, she says, you can call me Grandma or Madame President. And unfortunately for her, she is not Madame President. So she is Grandma. That's a nickname for her. Back to George Stephanopoulos. I have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of his biography to find out, almost as a tagline, like an incidental thing, he's a Greek. He's a powerful media guy. After the references, at the very bottom, called external links, it says, he belongs to the Council on Foreign Relations. Well, what's a man on ABC, Good Morning America, doing on the Council of Foreign Relations? So you know the Council of Foreign Relations was started by David Rockefeller, Alan Dulles, all of these men who were globalists. Alan Dulles, for instance, was the longest serving CIA director to date. And his brother is John Foster Dulles, and it's after him that the Washington Dulles Airport was named. And these guys are, again, no ordinary people. They are powerful globalists. Their grandfather and uncle both serve as United States Secretary of State. And as I said, the airport was named after John Foster Dulles. And this man was responsible for the 1953 Iranian coup d'etat. This was the first United States covert action to overthrow a foreign government in peacetime. So the duly elected prime minister had sought to audit the documents of the Anglo-Iranian oil company, a British corporation that has now become part of BP, and to limit the company's control over Iranian oil reserves. And of course, they went in, the British and the Americans, and overthrew a democratically elected government. Now, I'm not saying that one side is better than the other. Honestly, both sides play evil. And I do understand from the Western point of view that these Middle Eastern countries would have never had oil and would have never dug up any oil without American and British technology and investment. So from the American and British side, they have a perspective that they have some right to the oil because they open the oil fields up for these countries. So I don't want to justify and debate about oil right now. I just think that these people are very powerful and the dream that I had was from God pointing to these people and I couldn't have possibly known the name Ali, which is the name of his wife. And also that they are next to grandma's house, which means that they are Clinton operatives. They are very connected financially and also politically to the establishment, to the deep state. And when you talk about the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations, they are the deep state within the deep state. And you can see at their official 
website. It's all globalists, mainly left wing, but they're right wing globalists as well. It's not right and left always. Uh, they feature here conversation with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, leveraging multilateralism. Um, a conversation with the elders is almost Orwellian sounding. A conversation with Stacey Abrams. Again, these are all left wing operatives or globalist operatives. And Donald Trump has just opened the door to him. He says the deep state behind the deep state. And you know that I rarely talk about conspiracies and trilaterals and Bilderberg and all that because my position is I have to tell you what the Bible says and what I believe God told me. And unless I have insider information, I'm not really going to touch these things. So I, all I can do is just go to people who say that they have the information. And here's a man who was part of the CFR for 20 years. Uh, Admiral Chester Ward, who's gone now, uh, was a whistleblower after he left after he left uh, the CFR, and he wrote in his book, Kissinger on the Couch, that within the CFR exists a much smaller group, but more powerful, made up of Wall Street international bankers and their key agents. The members of this smaller group want the world banking monopoly from whatever power ends up in control of the global government. This CFR leadership faction, he added, is headed by the Rockefeller brothers. So, Maybe not everybody in there knows this, but according to this insider, this whistleblower, he says the ultimate goal of the CFR is global government. And that's exactly what the Bible warns about. The leader of the global government will be some handsome antichrist figure. He goes on to say the main purpose of the Council on Foreign Relations is promoting the disarmament of U.S. sovereignty and national independence and submergence into an all-powerful one-world government. So anytime that we see people that are trying to create this kind of overarching state, big government, controlling our freedoms, censoring us, then we are not for that. As a Christian, we have already been warned. Let's go to Senator William Jenner. He was an insider politically. Obviously, we are insiders spiritually. We have information that God reveals to us. Let's take a look at what the political insider said in 1954. The senator said, today, the path to total dictatorship in the U.S. can be laid by strictly legal means, unseen and unheard by Congress, the president, or the people. Just let that sentence soak in. Outwardly, we have a constitutional government. We have operating within our government and political system a well-organized political action group in this country determined to destroy our constitution and establish a one-party state. The important point to remember about this group is not its ideology, but its organization. It operates secretly, silently, and continuously to transform our government. This group is answerable neither to the president, the Congress, nor the courts. It is practically irremovable. And I think this is clearly why Donald Trump is such a threat to them. It says here the Council on Foreign Relations was founded in 1921 in uh, New York City and has an office in Washington, D.C. Its membership numbers around 4,900. And it's got all these people like secretaries of state, CIA directors, bankers, lawyers. And interestingly, when you go to their official membership page, you see this huge display of the number 58. Remember that? That number keeps coming up because literally Nun Het in Hebrew spells the name Noah as it was in the days of Noah. And you're in the 58th term of the presidency right now. And George Stephanopoulos is 58 years old. These are just convergences. These are just little clues. We're not superstitious about numbers, but I just think a message to the president of the United States. Listen to the warning. Do not trust George Stephanopoulos. He is next to grandma. So George Stephanopoulos, you see how the news is covering this. We haven't even seen the interview. And the Washington Post says George Stephanopoulos is filleting President Trump clip by clip. Uh, it says Donald Trump calls George Stephanopoulos a little wise guy in an ABC interview. Trump is walking, talking national security danger. Again, none of these, the Daily Beast, none of these are fair or uh, truthful or accurate. They're not concerned about accuracy. They're concerned about advocacy. You can see in political here. They're talking about this interview 
Trump brings Stephanopoulos into his bubble. You see, you could just slant that any which way. You could say he's being very transparent and has brought someone who's on, really, you know that he's not for Trump and yet has brought him in. What a transparent president. And here's how journalists do it. They're just so dishonest and they play these lexical trickeries. Trump brings Stephanopoulos into his bubble. They're not going to be fair to him. CNN says the 24 most bonker lines from Donald Trump's ABC interview. And honestly, this guy who writes, you would think a high school student wrote this. I mean, he ends it and says, this feels like a good place to end. It's just so unprofessional. Let me take you to what the Bible says about this. A lot of people are looking at Rome only, but you need to realize that the prophecies about Rome occurs in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7. The book doesn't end there. The book continues. And when we look at Daniel chapter 10, we see another vision beyond the dreams of Daniel chapter 2 and 7. And it says here in Daniel chapter 10, Gabriel says to Daniel, Then he said, Do you not know why I have come to you? But now I will return and fight the prince of Persia. And when I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side against these except Michael, your prince. The prophecy continues after Rome. And it goes on to the prince of Persia, which is Iran today. Iran's going to come back up in the news. I've been saying that for a long time, and now he, now it has. You've had these uh, alleged bombings of two Japanese oil tankers. You know that they're prepping up to go to war with Iran. And again, I think 2020 is the, uh, the time frame for war. But again, prophecy can have a leeway of one to two years. That's no big deal. You know, in the scheme of thousands of years, uh, we're really right on the mark. So I'm looking for Iran to reemerge. I'm looking for Iran to have some victories and then ultimately it gets defeated. And then the Prince of Greece will come. Understand that Greece in the Old Testament was much bigger than Greece today. The Greek Empire would have included Greece today, but also Turkey, Syria, and Egypt. And that's why I've been saying for 10, 15 years that you're going to have to look at Egypt and Syria coming up on the news and eventually Turkey. So somebody prominent from this region or of this ethnic extract is going to come up and deceive many, many people. I'm not saying George Stephanopoulos is the one. I'm just saying this is what the Bible says. So at the very least, I would not trust, not only do I not trust fake news, I would not specifically trust George Stephanopoulos to be in the White House and to give a fair interview or a fair presentation for Donald Trump. I really wish he would heed the dream uh, like Pilate should have heeded his wife's dream. God certainly speaks to us in dreams. In Matthew chapter 2, we find two warnings by dream. So this is basically the start of the gospel, and this is very core to our Christian belief. We believe God speaks today. We don't believe in a God that's out there in the nebulous. We believe in a personal God, an intelligent God, and a God who knows the future. He just knows things that hasn't happened yet in our time dimension. And he says this, when the wise men came to give gifts to Jesus when he was just an infant, they had the option to go back and see Herod. But the Bible says in chapter 2, verse 12, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. I don't know who the spiritual advisors for Donald Trump are. I don't know what they're saying to him. But I am saying across the ocean from another country in Australia, heed the dreams. There are dreams that God is giving to warn you, Mr. Trump, Mr. President. Then there was another dream down here where Joseph himself was warned in a dream. He had fled to Egypt because Herod had threatened all the babies and killed you know, many babies in Bethlehem. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in the city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. Even though Jesus' life was under threat since he was born and Joseph's family was under threat, yet God used the enemies and he used the threats to position Joseph and his family to be in the right place at the right time. And that's why Jesus is called, you know, Jesus of Nazareth because of that. And it fulfilled prophecy. Once again, if you want to learn about dreams, and I think you should, 
There's so many dreams in the Bible and I cover them in the life of Joseph, in the dream codes, two DVDs, and you can get some of these in MP3, MP4. Uh, it's so important to realize that God wants to speak to us. The last thing I just want to close with was that I decided to go back to my dream, which I recorded on May 23rd, 2014, and just look up, was there anything significant that day? And there's not a long list here. So uh, it says here, on that day, Russia and China veto the UN Security Council resolution to establish an international criminal court for war crimes in Syria. That's a denial of justice for all the people who have been murdered and died and been displaced in Syria. And so, as I said, the kingdom of Greece is going to come up in the end time and Syria is right in the heart of it. And Syria may actually be the very place where the Antichrist will come from. So a lot of injustices are happening there. And part of it was on that day when God gave me the dream, uh, the people were denied justice. War crimes are committed, atrocities are committed, and these leaders are getting away with it. Again, if you don't understand the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit operates or how things of the Spirit works, I think that all Christians need to go back and study 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. These are the main chapters about the gifts of the Spirit, and it's a brand new teaching that I'm doing right now in the church, so hopefully by the time you watch this, uh, you can go to our store, discover.org.au, and find some teaching on gifts of the Spirit. They're really, really important for us to understand how do these spiritual and supernatural things operate. They should be commonplace. And often dreams are a vehicle to deliver a word of wisdom. A word of wisdom can be delivered through a dream or through a prophecy or through a picture. And the word prophecy just means a vocal utterance, a vocal gift, someone speaking for God. It doesn't necessarily mean telling the future. So Christians don't understand these uh, distinctions that are made by the Apostle Paul and by all the examples of how the Holy Spirit operates. I think if we get better at flowing with the Holy Spirit, we're going to be attuned to Him and we're not going to make these mistakes in injustices and bad decisions. So I'm praying for you, Mr. President, and I'm praying that we will meet. In fact, I've had several dreams about President Trump. Our church has had dreams about President Trump. We've had dreams about Hillary Clinton, George Stephanopoulos, and President Trump. So God is speaking. We are not seeking these things. God is revealing these things to us. All I can do is get the message out. And until next time, put your faith in Jesus and look up. Look up, look up, yeah.